My dad would tuck me in the bed. You get to sleep, you know, Mr. Jackson's watching. Mr. Jackson was our chief of police, scrawny and 60, and I imagined him leaning a ladder up against my window and shining his flashlight in to check to see if I was asleep. Night, my dad would say, and, as I remember it, pausing in the dark hallway to light a cigarette bogey style, and then his footsteps gone away, then no more. Later, I remember going upstairs to bed by myself. I put the light on and read Famous Monsters, a fan magazine for those who love them all, Frankenstein, Werewolf, Dracula, and I believed I was right. Dracula would kick all their asses. But when I got the book from the library, I didn't even make it to the village inn, too damn scared, and even scared with a book under my bed. Yes, it was strange in the 50s. Mr. Frank Stefanik, who worked in the mill and lived behind us with his dog, Oscar, saw a flying saucer and it was in the papers. A week later, he fell off a crane, dead. Mars is calling, we all were waiting. At school, I had a friend, Steve, who they called Sputnik, since he was smart and as ugly as Bob Dylan at 60 when he was seven. And you could listen to the real Sputnik beeping on his stepfather's shortwave and we deserve Rod Serling. Yes, he was inevitable. We had all that under Cheyenne Mountain waiting. Steve would come to school with a big black eye and tell everyone how he got beat up by black shapes, but we knew it was his stepfather. And 20 years later, I met him in a bar, and he told me how he was just driving across the bridge after his divorce coming back from visiting his kids and pulled over and just jumped in the river then changed his mind. And he laughed, and we talked about famous monsters. He still held out for the werewolf, but there was something else, and he did kill himself before the year was out. And I always remember how we both leaned on the bar after he told his story, waiting for something worse to happen. Another public service announcement from Brill Cream. Men, beware. Use one dab of Brill Cream. Just a little dab makes your hair look excitingly clean, disturbingly healthy. This man dared to use two dabs. Now he's in trouble. We refuse to be responsible. Brill Cream, Brill Cream, Brill Cream. Brill Cream, a little dab will do you. Brill Cream, you look so damn there. If here, move there. I have looked to the skies while fruit flies circled empty beer cans. Well, I have, haven't you? We're attempting, really trying, to hear the sounds of both, that small by the trash can and that large out in space. Big buzzing going on down here on the ground. In our heads while we sleep, the crazy buggers run round hatching plans. Plenty big ones to colonize space with wise guy humans who know the words colonize. We hear of chimps and rats, and of astronauts and of puppy dogs who wake up one day with their cans way out in space, while stars circle round them like flies in our trash and the ones in our ointment. Ain't it funny how the answers always seem somewhere else? <laughs>
out, watch out, watch out for cigarette hangover. That stale, musty, smoked out taste in your mouth. Cigarette hangover. That tight, dry, uncomfortable feeling in your throat. Cigarette hangover. That's what takes the joy out of smoking. And when that happens to you, it's time to switch to Philip Morris. Remember, over two million more smokers have switched to Philip Morris. Yes, if you're tired of cigarette hangover, join the millions who have discovered in Philip Morris a milder smoke, a cleaner, fresher smoke than they've ever known before. Over two million more smokers have switched to Philip Morris. Remember, Philip Morris is the one, the only cigarette proved definitely less irritating, proved definitely milder than any other leading brand. No other cigarette can make that statement. Remember, top-ranking doctors, eminent nose and throat specialists, actually suggest Philip Morris in cases of irritation due to smoking. Above all, remember this. You'll be glad tomorrow you smoke Philip Morris today. Immortality. We lay on the damp autumn grass at dark fall, eyes turned to the heavens, ears straining to hear what can never be heard. Feeling the fear straining under our ribs, put there by the usually calm tones of TV newsmen who seem so unnerved by the mere fact of a small metal ball going around us in far off lonely space. And the cold crept up our legs and over our stomachs, seizing the very territory of us just as we imagined the Russians would do once their goddamn Sputnik showed them how. Later, when they put a dog in space, we felt better. We knew our dogs were smarter, faster, and more famous, like Rin Tin Tin and Lassie and Old Yeller, that poor thing that they had to shoot because he saved their lives by killing a rabbit coon. We thought maybe they could find a new dog that would put the Russians to rest once and for all, and we could get back to feeling young and free and positively immortal. Hi, fellas. Roy Rogers! Hey, that's a pretty tricky hat, isn't it? Partners, how would you like to surprise your pals like that? Well, you can with my new Roy Rogers quick shooter hat. It's by ideal. And here's how the quick shooter hat works. Just press this secret button right here, and a replica of an authentic Western pistol pops out and fires. It's your secret weapon, even when they think you're unarmed. So get Ideal's new Roy Rogers quick shooter hat at your favorite store today, and you'll always be ready for anything. Ask for Ideal's new Roy Rogers quick Once shooter hat. Once there was children's gazelles asleep in the green chapel, and food, 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 and great clipper ships, and President Taft leaning out, smiling and smiling at the symbolic quantities of small arms fire. There was median and modulus, the promise of parallel universes, of a color called Panaloo. And we were all magic, paradiso, adoration, jukebox, perfection, Christmas, titian, cortex, flung out in the wild blue yonder with a shoe shine and a smile. The young Goethe plays with his toy theater. The Tsar accepts all these restraints with extraordinary serenity and moral grandeur. Jack Ruby gets some good coke. Henry James writes a letter to his friend. But now we are void alphabet eggs at best, waiting for the spasm war when there will be golf town, galactic lamentation hometowns with bones, bones, bones. And there will be no modulus except deep on the Cheyenne Mountain where the Joint Chiefs dream the long dream, unsyllabled Poontang. It is later than you.
beautiful that the hands of the sisters, death and night, incessantly, softly remold again and ever again the face of the soiled world? that the hands of the sisters, death and night, incessantly, softly remold again and ever again the face of the soiled world. I claim this planet in the name of the Earth. Picture of Brando in The Wild One. The lighting, the angle of it, and the intensity of it. There's the rub, that unscratchable itch. For all the solemn protestations about man's irreducible essence, why, they add up to a leathery zip when put next to the honor of angry cynicism. To rebel in harmony with all things under the stoic eye of the burning sun. There's the ticket, the wild way, so longing till gone. <laughs> 